You know, I don't believe in ghosts, but at the same time, they absolutely terrify me, which probably makes no sense. Like, I don't believe they exist, but I'm not going to lie. Some nights when I'm lying in bed at 2 a.m. after a four hour long gooning session and I hear a noise downstairs, my brain just immediately assumes it's a ghost. Anyways, I know I said I'm never going to do another iceberg video again, but... I've been really into paranormal stuff lately, so when I saw this chart on Reddit, I just knew I had to come out of retirement. So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna watch a bunch of paranormal footage videos, and this could be anything from ghosts to aliens to cryptids, and I'm gonna sort them from the least believable to the most believable. So, let's get to it. Hey, are you sick of slow and boring browsers? Man, I sure am sick of this slow and boring browser. Now, I've been using Internet Explorer since 1992. I know, I know, I'm a bit of a fossil, but I recently switched to Opera GX, and I have to say, it is the most based browser I've ever had the pleasure of using. The best thing about Opera GX that sets it apart from every other browser on the World Wide Web is their mods. These mods can completely change everything about your browser experience. You know, it's easier if I just show you. Okay, maybe that's a little bit lowbrow for you. Maybe this Game Boy mod is a little bit more your speed. It gives a delightful retro vibe to your browser. There are hundreds of these mods that you can mix and match to get the best experience possible. But hey, it doesn't just stop at aesthetics, okay? Let's talk about performance. As you guys might know, other browsers like, say, Google Chrome, these other browsers are basically black holes for RAM. Opera GX has this panel that lets users limit the amount of CPU or RAM they're willing to let their browser use, which is really nice because I'm one of those guys that has like 114 tabs open at once. Now, you're probably thinking, Okay, Opera GX sounds pretty dope, but I don't feel like importing all my settings and bookmarks and stuff from my previous browser. Well, I'm here to tell you that's an absolutely stupid excuse because Opera GX is fitted with an import tool that allows you to quickly import all your settings from your previous browser. So go ahead and install Opera GX today. Thank you, Opera GX, for sponsoring this video. Okay, so I've divided all of the footage up into four tiers, and the first tier is complete dog shit, which I think speaks for itself. These videos are not only unbelievable, but they're so badly made that it's actually funny. Like, you guys should not skip this section just for the entertainment value. Like, they have a so bad it's good vibe to them. <laughs> When Scott Denton took his children to the park in Warwick, Rhode Island, he says he saw a real-life poltergeist. It's going faster! Look at it! Scott's convinced that what he saw wasn't normal. I mean, I, 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 I don't really... It's a, it's a fucking swing. It's swaying back and forth. I don't... Was... Is this newsworthy? All right, so this next video is of an alien that was discovered at a construction site in the middle of the night, and it doesn't have any sound, so I'm going to just add my own sound. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Baba Booey. Baba Booey. What the hell? I think this one's a thousand percent fake, because if I'm an alien, personally, I'm not going to a construction site of all places. I'm going to Dave & Buster's. Ah, Philadelphia. It's produced some really great things over the years, like Will Smith and Bill Cosby, and also some really horrible things, like Will Smith and Bill Cosby. The East State Prison falls into the latter category. Originally opened in 1829, it was the largest public building in the United States at the time of its opening. In its heyday, it housed some of the most dangerous psychopathic criminals ever, like Al Capone and bank robber Willie Sutton. But the only people in this joint that were more psychotic than the prisoners themselves were the guards. Torture was pretty common in the prison. If you slipped up, you could get strapped to a chair for hours. You could get sprayed down with a hose. You could even get hung up by your feet and left out to freeze. But the worst thing of them all was something called the hole, which was a dark pit of despair with no light, no human contact, and barely any food. 
Sounds kind of like a Reddit moderator's bedroom, minus the food port. By the 1970s, the building had fallen into complete disrepair. I mean, that's bound to happen to a building that's over 100 years old. And the Pennsylvania government decided it wasn't worth it to fix it up, so they just closed it down in 1971. Or at least that's the official story. But you know me, I never believe the official story. The real story is that it got closed down because it's haunted. Inmates, guards, and prisoners have reported all sorts of paranormal ruckus, from voices to shadowy figures and visions of ghosts. This place has it all. Since its closing in 1971, it's gained a bit of a reputation as one of the most haunted places in the United States. It's even been featured on Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, and Most Haunted. Now, I get that you guys might be skeptical, but what if I told you there was video evidence of paranormal activity? Let's play that back one more time. Uh, I don't know, man. I wish there was more than 17 pixels. Maybe then I can make something out of this. Uh, to me, it's not very convincing. So this next video is from a channel called Scary Videos, who has a very scary disclaimer at the beginning. Luckily, I can use that good old fair use doctrine to react and criticize their video in a transformative manner. All right, so you got this guy, he's sleeping in his bed. Looks like he's somewhere in Moldova based off the room. And then boom, as you can see, the sheets just up and fly off the bed. Now, so far, the most disturbing thing is that this mother sucker's sleeping in jeans and socks. Oh, and it doesn't stop there. There's also a uh, specter of some sort at his window. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this there so I don't get anally brutalized by a copyright claim. Baba Bowie. Oh, my goodness, bro. This is an absolute classic. I remember back in fifth grade, this video scared the shit out of me. I mean, I don't really have much to say other than that's a very rude ghost. On June 14th, 1947, a large metallic object crashed in the New Mexico desert. A cattle rancher named Mac Brazel found the wreckage and decided to tell the local sheriff. But this was way above his pay grade, so he called the U.S. Air Force. They sent Major Jesse Marcel to investigate the wreckage. Here's a picture of him posing with the debris. For some reason, Marcel decided to make a public statement on his findings to the local newspaper. The next day, they ran a story with the now infamous headline, RAAF Captures Flying Saucer. Soon after, the Air Force would set the record straight and claim that it was not a flying saucer, but just your standard weather balloon. Now, Marcel himself would later claim that the weather balloon was actually an alien craft and that the Air Force told him to keep his mouth shut about it. He even wrote an entire book on the matter called The Roswell Legacy. And that's just one of the many books written on this topic. Now, in 1989, this funeral director named Glenn Dennis, who worked in Roswell, claimed that he started getting a bunch of weird calls from the airbase asking him things like, So, uh, let's say hypothetically you had, say, a uh, alien body. How would you go about preserving that? You know, just out of curiosity. Really, the way I became involved in this was started out in the after early afternoon around probably 1.30 in the afternoon. And I received a telephone call from the mortuary officer out at the Walker Air Force Base, Army Airfield Base. And uh, he was requiring, inquiring about what would be the smallest possible casket that we could get that would be hermetically sealed. Then he dropped an absolute bombshell. He claimed that he knew a nurse who actually performed an autopsy on an alien that was discovered near their UFO crash site. Now, I know this sounds like a load of hogwash, but years later, a video surfaced that possibly proves what Dennis said is true. What you're looking at here is actual, 100% not fake footage of an autopsy being performed on one of the aliens at Roswell. Okay, so in this video, we have an Irish gentleman playing with the Ouija board, and hold on, wait a second. This is the same, this is the same 
kitchen is the ghost throwing things in the kitchen video. Anyways, let's continue watching, I guess. If you guys are wondering what that device is on the table there, it's called a EMF and it basically measures electromagnetic fields. I guess whenever something paranormal happens, they go off the charts, which you can see in this video. Every time the ghost does some stuff, the EMF increases. Now going through this guy's backlog of videos, he has about a thousand of them and he's been haunted for like 14 years. Also, I think I should note that he started making videos around the same time that paranormal activity came out. So I think he was trying to piggyback off that. And uh, he was pretty successful for a while. But at the end of the day, this stuff's not really believable if you're over the age of, say, three. The Carlisle Castle Hotel is an ancient building in Sydney, Australia that was built all the way back in 1876. Today, it's a very popular pub. And I'm not going to lie, this looks like a great place to enjoy a pint of Foster's with the boys. Maybe indulge in a little kangaroo kebab or whatever the fuck those people eat i don't know they're related to the british so i imagine their cuisine is more horrendous than anything in this video anyways here's some cctv footage from inside the pub i mean that could just be something going on with the camera lens but not too convincing but wait we're not done yet <laughs> oh no 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 <laughs> explain that one atheists oh and we're not even done yet Okay, so as you can see, everybody's having a good time talking about rugby, eating koala fritters, and then boom! Not exactly sure what happened, because honestly, the camera quality, it's not great. But something up there levitated, and then the bartender freaked out a little bit. So in the iceberg chart I'm going off of, there's a link to this entry, and it's just an image of a creepy-looking Japanese girl. I was kind of confused at what I was looking at. But it turns out it's a still image from this video. Top 10 scariest Japanese ghosts from the YouTuber Paranormal Man. <laughs> Did you see it? Nah, bro, I didn't see it. Can you please point it out to me? As the man in the white vest exits the elevator, the strange figure of a woman appears behind him and the cameraman falls to the floor in fear. Oh, okay, now I see it. This is a classic, man. This is one of the OG ghost videos on YouTube. So the video opens with the guy explaining that he's been experiencing some paranormal shenanigans in his house for weeks. And one day he comes home from work and finds one of his dogs terrified and hiding under the bed. Come here. Phoebe, come here. You okay, girl? What's the matter? What's the matter, honey? Do you hear something? Then he inexplicably decides to go up to the attic where this happens. Well, this sucker really made me watch 4 minutes and 51 seconds of this video just to see a bucket fall over. I'm ashamed of myself. I remember coming across this video 3 years ago when I was bedridden with a particularly bad case of Gilmore's groin. It was all over social media at the time. I mean, I'm just gonna come right out and say it. This shit looks like CGI. There's no way this isn't CGI. Because here's the thing. It's too good. And I know I've been complaining about grainy footage this whole video. But I think there's a sweet spot, okay? If it's too shitty, then it's not believable. But if it's too good, it's also not believable. You got to be somewhere in the middle to convince me. So according to whoever made this iceberg chart, a link of this video can't be found. However... It can be seen on Top 15's video, Top 15 Haunted Dolls Caught Moving on Camera. You know, it's kind of depressing seeing so many of these top weird doll videos all have millions of views. You know, luckily, this type of lazy, uninspired content would never do well on YouTube today.
So this was taken on a CCTV at a hospital. Well, there's another reason I'm terrified of hospitals, but unfortunately I'm in and out of them a lot due to my chronic Gilmore's groin, but you know, nothing I can do about that. Just the thumbnail of this one alone is enough to give me goosebumps. Fuck! I hate ventriloquist dummies, bro. They're so creepy. I don't know what it is about them that just gives me the yips. His creator, an American POW, was shot with 10 other men on a forced labor duty two weeks before the end of the war. Since then, Mr. Fritz has become kind of a collector's item for people who are into the paranormal. His current owner has reported some strange occurrences going on in his house since he bought the doll. So one day, to prove it to the rest of us, he decided to put a camera in the room where he kept the dummy. And this is what he captured. Bro, I, I don't know if this is fake or not. I don't want to watch it anymore. It's it's creeping me out. Also, how are you going to buy a ventriloquist dummy from World War II? I'd be surprised if that mother sucker wasn't possessed. Okay, so this video has 10 million views. And I do not understand because it's 10 minutes of nothing. So the premise of the video is that this lady has CCTV footage of different parts of her house. And you can see these so-called light anomalies or glowing orbs and her dog apparently can see these glowing orbs and then starts freaking out now here's the thing about glowing orbs because they've come up multiple times in these paranormal videos and and it's it's just dust it's dust floating in front of your camera lens bro this is not some great mystery 10 million views 10 million views for this What was that? Did you see that? Yeah. That ain't no damn ghost. That's a 4chan user with a severe vitamin D deficiency. Later in the video, these lads go to investigate the 4chan user and he just disappears. I told you been empty for years. This is a pretty obscure video. It only has about 7.6 thousand views. In it, there's a guy named Martin recording the inside of an abandoned church at night, which is never a bad idea. But in the description, he claims that he's a photographer and shoots inside the church all the time, just never at night. And it's going pretty good for the most part until you get to about the one minute mark. Come down here, it's peaceful, it's quiet. Shit, 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 Oh my god. Oh shit. So it's kind of dark and hard to see, so let's play it back with the contrast and the exposure turned up. Shit, 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 shit. Baba boy. The rake is a ghoul-like creature that stalks the forests of the Northeast United States. Well, actually, it's a creepypasta that's completely made up, but some people believe it's based on a real urban legend, and there's even a video somebody recorded that bears a resemblance to the rake. So this footage was apparently taken in April of 2011 by sewer workers in some old Victorian era sewers in England. Keep hearing weird noises in the basement, Steve. So I just want to. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! No fucking way! No way! Oh my god! Oh my god! See, bro. 
There's nothing on this fucking door. Hello? Okay, I admit that was weird, but it's kind of hard to trust a dude who wears that much jewelry. He also has another video where he sees a very disturbing creature in his basement. Come on out, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, this wasn't particularly convincing to me, but people in the comment section of his TikTok seem to think that there's definitely a shadow demon haunting this man's house. And I never knew TikTok users were extremely gullible and believe everything they see on the internet. Hmm. How can I use this to my advantage? By the way, some of these videos are confirmed hoaxes, but I'm not going to tell you guys which ones. That's up for you to decide. And it's not that one, by the way, that we just saw. If somebody pointed a gun at me and gave me 1,000 chances to pronounce the title of this video correctly, I would just tell him to shoot me. <laughs> Let's play it back one more time because it's hard to catch the paranormal. The title of this video is pretty self-explanatory. It's people visiting an abandoned hospital and witnessing various paranormal incidents. So this video is like 12 minutes long and it's mostly dog shit. And the people recording it are speaking French. So I won't subject you to that too much. I'll just play the highlight. La Llorona is an urban legend in Latin America that was popularized in the United States by the movie The Curse of La Llorona, which from what I've heard is complete trash. The legend is different based on which country you're in, but the general story is that back in the 1500s, La Llorona drowned her two children and later herself in a river after discovering that her husband cheated on her. And this may just be the origin of the crazy Latina archetype. Anyways, she was racked with guilt after drowning her children and was forced to roam the earth as a ghost forever searching for them, but never being able to find them. She's kind of like the Hispanic version of a banshee, I guess, and can be heard crying and screaming in the night. Or at least that's what parents in Mexico tell their kids to scare them from going out past dark. Over the years, many people claim to have seen her, including the people who recorded this video. So this video starts off with a wall of text, which is already putting me off. What is this, bro? Trying to watch a creepy ghost video and here you are making me read a fucking novel. Whatever. On June 11th, 2011, a spirit of an employee... What, what's up with this grammar? A spirit of an employee who was dead one year ago was found wandering in an office in Bhopal. Bhopal. That's, that's gotta be India, bro. That's gotta be India. That, that, that explains the grammar. This video was recorded in a CCTV camera installed in the office. The ghost of the employee was caught when the security team was watching the footage. It's a weird angle for a CCTV camera, first of all. Second of all, the time and date and those squares look like they were added in post. So this is 
I want my money back, bro. Uh. Oh. oh, did you see that? Let me turn this light. Hello? I gotta say, man, the creepy music and bad acting really sells it for me. There are so many of these The Haunting videos, there's like 35 parts. What the crap was that? Whoa! The description of this video says, my sister was sleeping around 5.30 a.m. one morning, and this is what happened. Okay, well, why are you setting up a camera to record your sister while she sleeps? I think that needs to be answered, but let's watch the video first. So this person actually has quite a few videos documenting her ghost roommates. Here's another one called, What Goes On When I Sleep. <laughs> what is it with white people and ghosts? Just move. Like if there's a hint of ghostly activity in my house, I'm moving immediately. I'm putting up for sale that day. And guess what? I ain't disclosing shit, all right? The next person who buys it can deal with it. Okay, this one's another, another orb video. What is up with these people on the orbs, man? Like, why are they obsessed with these floating orbs? It's the most easily explainable thing. I hate that I have to keep bringing this up. It's dust. All right, well, let's see what else happens. Oh, wow, the chair's moving. Back in 2009, this video was posted to YouTube. It was supposedly recorded in the 1970s. Now, most of it is just random footage of a dude riding a snowmobile. But at the end of the video, you can see a very disturbing creature in the woods. This is clearly a dude in a furry suit walking on all fours. There's nothing paranormal about this, but... That doesn't make it any less disturbing because, well, it's a dude in a furry suit walking on all fours. Now we're going a little bit deeper into tier two. This tier is for videos that they're still fake, but they're not completely stupid. Like they're a little bit more convincing than things from tier one. You know, back in my day, you couldn't just turn on your TV and watch a court at the gym for eight hours straight. You had to go down to your blockbuster video store and rent the According to Jim box set on DVD. Then, if you didn't return it in time, you had to sell your kidney and get a second mortgage on your house because they would fuck you in the ass with late fees. All right, so we're looking at a poltergeist haunting a blockbuster in Mexico. Now, I'm not sure when this was recorded, but blockbuster itself became a ghost in 2010 so obviously it's got to be before that <laughs> no 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 <laughs> ah, damn what an asshole ghost this guy's just trying to do his job and he keeps knocking shit over this ghost definitely works for netflix this one comes to us from the island of England, which is already terrifying. And adding to that creepiness is the fact that this video is grainier than a bowl of quinoa. Oh, All right, I don't know if you guys caught that, but let's play it one more time. I'm trying so hard not to make an ex-wife joke right now. Okay, and as if the sound wasn't creepy enough, look at this photo that was captured from a still in the video. Right. 
I'm going to have to apologize right off the bat for the quality of this next video because I'm pretty sure it was recorded on a fucking overly ripe mango. This mysterious driver tricks cops into thinking he's about to pull over. Then all hell breaks loose. For a moment, it appears as if the driver in his car had disappeared into thin air. But in the blink of an eye, the driver comes into view again. Crackheads have superpowers, okay? This guy was probably so high that he teleported to another dimension just to escape the cops. Baba Bowie. On June 2nd, 2015, there was a particularly bad earthquake off the coast of Japan, which triggered a massive tsunami. On that day, some dude risked his life to capture this video of a wave destroying the city. Now, the video is 6 minutes and 35 seconds long, and let me tell you, the ghost doesn't appear until 4 minutes 37 seconds, wasting my damn time. Anyways, you can clearly see some kind of white ectoplasmic entity that appears before quickly disappearing. If you have any interest in the paranormal, you're probably familiar with Ed and Lorraine Warren. They were like the most famous paranormal investigators of all time and wrote multiple books on ghost hunting, clairvoyancy, demonology, and other mystical shit like that. They were recently shot to international stardom by the Conjuring movies, which were based on some of their investigations. But way before that, back in the year 2000, they were featured in a documentary called World's Scariest Ghosts Caught on Tape. And one particular scene from that film is guaranteed to have you soiling your britches. The Warrens feel that some of the most compelling evidence ever recorded has been videotaped by them in this Connecticut home. Ed attempts to communicate with the troubled spirit. One knock for yes, two for no. Are you a man? Are you a boy? You want the people in this house to move? One knock for yes, two for no. Next, Ed decides to confront the poltergeist alone. Give me some sign. Give me some sign that you're here. I command you to reveal your identity. The only thing scarier than that is the pedo allegations against Ed Warren. Our next video comes to us from the mystical lands of Russia. Come here. Что это? Тихо, тихо, тихо. Тихо, тихо. Honestly, this is probably one of the most normal things to ever happen in Russia. But uh, I'm gonna give it a 2 out of 10 and I'll tell you why. The video's description makes me think it's completely fake. Listen to this. I have recorded this video while going for a long walk with my dog. I can't explain what was happening there. I was very surprised. I didn't expect to meet anyone because it was in a field of wood. This is written like somebody's just making fun of how Russian people talk. I don't know what the context behind this video is. I just know it's creepy as hell. What the fuck? Your face has completely changed. Doesn't even look like a person. Hey, hear me out. All right, so we got a couple of young fellows exploring an abandoned building. And uh, I'm not sure where they are. It's probably like North Africa, possibly Tunisia. It doesn't matter. What's important is that at two minutes and nine seconds in, you can very clearly see a, a headless specter of some sort. Man, I don't know what it is with ghosts, but they only like to appear in videos with less than 200 pixels.
You know, I think I actually know what that is. I think I might have read about this before. Oh yeah, it says here in my ghost encyclopedia that it's a shadow midget from the umbral dimension. Either that or there's just a bug on the camera lens. So this one is from a Reddit post that says Native American myth of little people caught on camera. I don't know if I gotta be the one to break it to you, but little people exist and they prefer to be called midgets. Oh wait, no, I think I have that backwards. Okay, here's the thing. Clearly there's someone there and clearly they are small in stature. So I'm thinking this isn't necessarily paranormal. Maybe it's just like a homeless little person who's secretly been sneaking into their house and stealing their food at night. And he just finally got caught on camera. So he's got to move on to the next house now, unfortunately. This video is from inside Jimmy's World Grill in Luton, England. So as you can see, the menu moves without anybody touching it. So it's clearly some sort of poltergeist wants some really bad food. And the thing is, this isn't even the most terrifying thing to come out of loot in England. Honestly, I think I'd rather take my chances with the ghost. The Fresno Nightcrawler is a cryptid or an alien or ghost of some sort, and it looks Kind of like a pair of glow-in-the-dark pants. There's been a quite a few sightings of these things. The first one was captured on CCTV in someone's backyard in Fresno. A few years later, creature was captured again just north of Fresno in Yosemite and you can see this video is much better and there's also a little baby night crawl it's kind of cute all right next video is from Kentucky which I'm still not convinced is a real place This next video is called Fenomeno Paranormal Benny. I think it speaks for itself. Man, I know there's a way to fake this. I just don't know how, you know, that's the thing. Like, did they use magnets or is it just CGI? I really don't know because it, it looks too, too real to be CGI. This video is from the YouTuber Junked Up Kitten, who mostly posts videos of life on his farm. But then there's also this. We're just sort of checking around to see if we can find anything on our own. You catch that? You catch that? Let's slow it down. I'm not gonna lie, that kind of looks like my Uncle Ruben, and it could be him, honestly. He skipped bail back in 2019, and no one's seen him since. A Redditor by the name you slash failed talk show host. Wait a minute, is this Lily Singh? Hello, my name is Lily, and I ain't no white man. This Redditor had been complaining that he or she had been hearing noises in the kitchen for years. One day, they decided to start taking pictures of the kitchen to see what was going on in there. You see it? Baba Bowie. No joke, that actually looks like my Uncle Ruben. This is kind of scaring me right now. Then he posted a follow-up video, and it's kind of dark. You can't see much, but when you turn the contrast up... Whoever posted this video had the brilliant idea of recording in a cemetery at night, because, you know, why not? And this is what he sees. Amiga! This next video comes to us from a paranormal investigator named Michael McGee. And our boy Mike has been getting harassed by ghosts since at least 2010. I'm going to show you one of the most disturbing videos on his channel. 
I like one of the top comments that says, It's scary watching it, but funny if you think the ghost needs to take a shit. I mean, that's a ghost walking in the snow, man. Does anything else need to be said? This 12 second video allegedly captures a creature called a dog man. Dog men have been seen all over the United States, with the most famous one being in Michigan. Now, again, the video is only 12 seconds long, and the dude said his camera died conveniently. I don't know, man. It kind of just looks like a cat to me. It doesn't really look like a dog. Luckily, a YouTuber by the name of Bigfoot Tony did a breakdown of the video, explaining why I'm a stupid piece of shit. Um, for start, um, we see the shoulder coming here, uh, the left shoulder, huge, massive uh, shoulder and arm here, coming past this tree. And we have another, um, the rest of the body, whether that's the leg or the, the rear end, I don't know, over, all the way over here. So it comes all the way over here, and also we have an arm over this way. So here we have the nose, the uh, mouth, and the, the right eye here. Opening and closing. All right, you know what? I'm a believer now. That's a dogman, bro. That's a dogman if I've ever seen one. Man, that kind of looks like... Kind of looks like my right testicle. Should probably get that checked out, honestly. I'm not gonna lie, this is actually preferable to my usual experience at the barber. You know, I'm just sitting there for 45 minutes getting sexually harassed by my barber and then he charges me 50 bucks on top of it. I don't know, man, this is kind of believable. Like the way that guy's freaking out kind of sells it for me. Tier three is for videos that are real, but aren't necessarily paranormal, right? So they're not purposely being faked, but at the same time, they probably have a rational explanation. That being said, most of these videos are still pretty disturbing. On January 2nd, 2014, a woman made a post on Reddit about a disturbing experience she had while using an app called Sleep as Android, which basically just tracks your sleep patterns and gives you analytics. One of the features of this app, which honestly is pretty creepy in and of itself, is that it records any noises you make while you're sleeping, like snoring, sleep talk, coughing, moaning, gagging, things like that. If you detect that you are snoring, the app will do a sound. We have like hours and hours of these recordings. I'm not sure why you would ever let this creepy Russian dude record you while you sleep, but what are you gonna do? On December 30th at 2.04 AM, I caught something very weird. To set up, this night I was sleeping in my bed. My three-year-old was with me that night as he is scared of the dork. It was just the two of us in the whole house. The next night, I decided to go through and delete my recordings and saw this particular record. In it, you can hear some clicks that start to get louder over the course of the recording. Eventually, you can hear me say, what are you doing? And immediately after, there is a deep voice that says, nothing. The clicks become very loud at that point, and at the very end of the recording, you hear some voices say, that's them. So here's the recording so you guys can judge for yourselves. What are you doing? Well, that's creepy as shit. Who is them? Is them us? Is the fourth wall being broken here? Do I even exist? So you can clearly hear from the recording that there are two voices that don't sound exactly the same, but they sound similar enough to where you would think the woman is just talking to herself in her sleep. But here's the thing. Some dude on Reddit did a whole ass analysis of the voice and concluded that it couldn't have been from the same person. Now, there's a lot of theories about this, like someone broke into the home. My theory is that it's a very horny ghost. On its own, this recording would probably be like a two out of 10 on the believability scale, but with the voice analysis, that's gonna jump it up to like a six. Okay, so you got two little girls sitting at the table having some dinner. Yeah. All of a sudden, one of them sees something in the kitchen and gets spooked. What? 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 I'm scared. 
and the other girl starts laughing at her <laughs> pretty soon she would also see whatever's in the kitchen and get spooked as well <laughs> Now, the mother of the two girls actually posted a video of what was in the kitchen and what disturbed the girls so much. You know, this one's actually kind of believable because I don't think it's very easy to train them to act and cry on command like that. So I give it like a six out of 10 believability. Oh, this one's an absolute certified hood classic. Now, you guys may not know this about me, but I'm a... I'm a Bigfoot head, okay? I'm a big Bigfoot guy. I even have a Bigfoot sign. And if you're at all interested in BF or even cryptids in general, then you've definitely seen this video. It's the most famous cryptid video of all time. They've made entire documentaries based on this few minutes of footage. A lot of people will say, that's just a dude in a costume. But I say to those people, where's your imagination? Where's your childlike sense of wonder? It's, it's fucking Bigfoot, okay? And nobody's gonna tell me otherwise. So I've talked about the Paris catacombs a few times now, but I'll do a short history lesson for those who aren't caught up. In the 1700s, the cemeteries of Paris were starting to get full, so it was decided that they would start moving bodies into the abandoned limestone mines under the city. Today, the catacombs are home to more than 6 million deceased. Just look at this shit, man. It's terrifying. It's like a level straight out of Diablo 2 or something. Over the years, it's become a bit of a tourist attraction, with a section of the catacombs being converted into a museum. But the thing is, the part that you're actually allowed to visit is only about 5% of the entire catacombs. Like, this tunnel system is massive. I cannot stress this enough. It's been estimated that there are 200 miles of passages. And there's this group of people who illegally go out and explore the restricted sections of these tunnels. Some of them even set up a whole ass movie theater and bar inside. Listen, man, I'm not the type of person to shit on people's hobbies. No, wait, I'm exactly that type of person. It's, it's weird. It should come as no surprise, given how big these catacombs are, that a few people have gone missing over the years. Now, most of them eventually get out, but not everyone was so lucky. So, he's what we're looking at fighting. here is Did footage from a camera that was apparently found deep in the catacombs. The owner was nowhere to be found. He's running faster in the video, and you can see at some point the guy gets the startled and starts to run. And all of a sudden, we hear his breathing get louder and louder, uh, as though something was scaring him. He was, he's, he's frightened, he's frightened. Occasionally he stops, perhaps, to try to decide which way to run among all the many different corridors. He's running faster and faster and faster, deeper and deeper into the catacombs. And all of a sudden... And for a split second, he turns the camera and you can see what startled him so bad. Hi! We actually don't know what happened after this. We don't know if the guy survived, if he found his way out, what he was running from, or if this was all just an elaborate hoax. Nobody knows. The footage has never been released in its entirety. We only know about it from an episode of the show, Scariest Places on Earth. Here's the thing about this though, it's not necessarily paranormal, right? If this guy's just exploring these catacombs, maybe he just started going crazy and claustrophobic after being lost in there for a long time. It's entirely plausible. But man, I hope he made it out because that's a rough way to go out. So the Beast of Dartmoor is a cryptid that was spotted around England. I mean, it kind of looks like a nondescript blob. And bro must have been filming this on a Game Boy Snap. Like that could be anything, a boar, a wolf, a big cat, I, I don't know. But sightings of some unknown creature have been reported in that area since at least 1988. Uh, here's another photo of it. Now it's entirely possible that these are actually pumas that escaped from the local zoo. Apparently the owner of the Dartmoor Zoo released a pair of pumas in the wild for some psychotic reason. A bear, I told you, I told you, I told you I seen something. Quickly, no, I bet no, I don't even know. What's this? See? What'd I say? Oh my god, what'd I say? Ah! Living in the UK sounds terrifying. Aside from ghosts, there's like a 27% chance you're gonna be stabbed on your way to the local Tesco. And then you gotta come home and eat shit that looks like this. 
This is some underwater research footage taken in Japan's Sagami Bay, and it captures, you know, the things you would expect in this type of recording. An octopus, a squid, funny looking fish. But wait, what the hell is that thing? Man, that looks like a Pokemon or a, or a PAL from the game PAL World. Some people believe that this is a cryptid known as a Ningen, which has been spotted by Japanese fishing vessels in the southern part of the globe for years. I don't know what it is about San Diego that makes it such a hotbed for extraterrestrial activity. Maybe it's the beautiful beaches or the gorgeous downtown area. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I actually really like San Diego, but I do not like the abnormally high amount of UFO sightings. On April 27th, 2020, the Pentagon released three videos of Tic Tac shaped UFOs captured by- Liza, look it. Hey. Liza, go like this. Okay, so people in the comments are saying there's a ghost child eight seconds into the video, but I tried hard and I could not see it. So I imported the video into Premiere Pro and cranked up the contrast and- Liza, look it. Hey. So there was this famous Russian diver named Andrei Roskov, and he was known for diving in some of the most tumultuous waters in the world. One day, he was set to do a dive in the North Pole something which he had done dozens of times by that point. But this time was different. Suddenly, the cameraman appears at the surface. But where's Andre? Something has gone wrong. And why did the cameraman leave him under the water? The worried assistants try to drag their friend out. Roshkov is an experienced diver. He's a rescue ranger. What could have possibly happened to him? Tragically, when they drag him out from under the ice, he's already dead. Despite an autopsy and a full investigation, we still don't really know what ended this diver's life. Watching the shots afterwards, the assistants noticed strange underwater lights, perhaps from a submarine. So a lot of people have been speculating on what those lights could possibly be. Some people think it might've been a UFO. Others think a cryptid or the more reasonable explanation of a submarine. People think that the shock of seeing these strange lights gave Andre a heart attack, which is what the coroner said caused his passing. The unexpected beams of light might have frightened or somehow disoriented the master diver and could have contributed to his untimely death. I don't think that's the case. You know, I think this situation is already tragic enough without bringing UFOs into it, but that's just me. This was recorded from the window of a commercial airplane. The UFO videos are always so much more convincing than the ghost videos because I can't make heads or tails of what the heck that could be. Some people believe it's a shape-shifting UFO. Others think that it's the light reflecting on the window in a weird way. But the weirdest theory is that it's a cryptid known as an atmospheric jellyfish which, as its name implies, is a jellyfish-looking creature that flies. There have been multiple sightings of these all over the world, and nobody has any clue what they are. Listen, man, I'm a pretty skeptical guy by nature, but that that's an alien. I don't care what anyone says. This is from a post on Reddit. I was alone in my apartment taking a shower when I heard a yanking sound on the gate of my front door. The gate is inside the house and the door is outside. I recognized the sound automatically and checked the front door. Before I did, I thought to record in case I caught something. What is okay, so I don't necessarily think this is a ghost per se, but it could be that somebody tried to break into his house, which I would argue is just as creepy. And a lot of people in the comments seemed to agree with that, and they were concerned that someone was trying to bust inside his house. But he said himself that there was no way that could be true. First of all, he checked the gate, and it was pulled from inside the house. He also checked his house like a maniac and found no evidence of human activity. Oh, and after he heard the noise, he started recording a few seconds later, so there's no way there would be enough time for someone to break in and then immediately leave. There was actually a whole ass argument in the comments between OP and Ghost Deniers. I found this video on a Spanish conspiracy Twitter page. Uh, for all I know, this could be perfectly explainable, but since I can't, 
I found this video on the r slash ghost subreddits, but before we watch it, here's a little bit of context. That day I came home and there was no one. I sat on the sofa and started watching ghost videos on YouTube. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't do that. What are the odds that you're watching ghost videos and then a ghost materializes? But it's okay. I'm going to suspend disbelief. Let's continue. I started to hear some noises upstairs like footsteps or someone cleaning the room. At first, I thought it was my sister in her bedroom, but I called her name and no one answered. So I thought I was starting to suggest myself by watching the ghost videos. Okay, so he's self-aware. That's good. I left the light on in my hallway and then I started to hear some noises in my sister's room. Then I heard the door from the closet in my sister's room. I was home alone. I was so scared and the damn shadow appears and moves to the side two times. It's kind of hard to see, but the crack at the top of the door, it's letting some light in and then there's some movement. But I mean, it's just some shadows, bro. That could be anything. But to be fair, if I was in his situation, I'd probably be shitting my pants too, so. So this guy was checking his ring camera outside and pay attention and see if you can spot the wandering spirit. All right, if you weren't able to see it, it's right there, right by this white truck. Now I have a theory about this because these spirit looking entities are captured on rings and other doorbells all the time. And I think it's just a person walking like a living non-ghost person and the camera just sucks ass at rendering background motion so it looks like a, a a spirit or a visage but that's not a fun explanation so let's just go with ghosts i'm scared this is the cream of the crop okay these are the videos that i personally found the most convincing like i'm not saying i believe in the paranormal now but i'm a step closer than i was Okay, this video is called A House Whose Previous Owner Is Dead. And all the comments are in Japanese, so you know we're about to see some wild stuff. That's fucked up, dude. Imagine you're in the afterlife and some schmuck comes and just pours boiling water on you. I don't know about you guys, but that blood curdling scream kind of freaked me out. I'm going to have to sleep with a nightlight on at your mom's house tonight. You know, I said it once and I'll say it again. Never record the inside of your house after dark. 90% of the time, if it's not a ghost or a demon, it's gonna be some drifter who's been secretly living in your attic for months. They also captured these orbs floating around their house, which I, I don't know, man. I, I, that's just dust, isn't it? It's just like a speck of dust floating in front of the lens. I don't really think that's that's anything. Now, at some point, the homeowners started asking the ghost questions and I guess it got mad or something because the door to their son's room got stuck. They had no way to open it. They actually had to break it down. Are you here? Are you in the boys room? Yeah! This door stopped right here. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, bro, I, I, either these people are the worst parents in the world or there's an actual ghost haunting their son's bedroom. I don't I don't know. I'm hoping it's just an ARG or something, but, you know, I, if not, I feel bad for whoever bought that house. Do you even have to disclose if the house is haunted when you sell it? I, I don't know. Friday, October 28th, 1997. Strange lights were reported in the night sky in Phoenix, Arizona. Witnesses say that there were five lights arranged in a V formation. It was hard to get a clear look because it was nighttime, but it's thought that these lights were part of one single giant spacecraft that looks something like this. 
Now, the Phoenix Lights was a very unique event because it wasn't just like one or two schmucks witnessing this. It was hundreds of people across multiple states, including the actor Kurt Russell. This took place in Arizona. An unidentified pilot, according to the press cuttings, flying near an airport in Arizona with his son when he spotted six lights in the night sky. I saw six lights over the airport in absolute uniform in a V shape. So there were actually two separate incidents. One was the V formation I was telling you about earlier. And then another one was reported as a series of lights that were hovering in one spot for a long time before suddenly disappearing. And I gotta say, it's lucky that this was captured on film. Otherwise the government would have probably gaslit us into believing there was some kind of mass psychosis or something. Now, the second sighting I was talking about was the one that most people saw. You could spot it from Phoenix to Tucson, all the way to Nevada. So here's the official story. A group of A-10 Thunderbolt planes were flying in formation as part of a training exercise called Operation Snowbird. So that explains the first sighting. Part of Operation Snowbird involved dropping flares, which would explain the other sightings and why the lights just sat there before disappearing suddenly. Now here's where things start to get insane. The governor of Arizona at the time, Fife Symington III, wait, is that his real name? That sounds like a name you use to make fun of a British person. Whatever, try to put that aside for a second. At the time of the sightings, FS3 held a press conference where he jokingly brought out an extraterrestrial to poke fun at the whole situation. And now I'll ask Officer Stein and his colleagues to escort the accused into the room so that we may all look upon the guilty party. Don't get him too close to me, please. It's, you know. Years later, after he left public office, he would change his tune. March 13th, 1997. This event called Lights Over Phoenix. What did you see? Well, I saw a, uh, a huge craft just kind of come right over a Squaw Peak. How big? Bigger than anything I've ever seen in the sky. Like an aircraft carrier in the yeah, sky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that, yeah. And it, and it was hard to define because of the light in terms of the size, but it, but it was absolutely silent and had sort of eerie embedded lights. Unquestionably, it was a UFO, which means unidentified flying object. Do you believe it was something from the U.S. government that they no. were kind of flying around? No, it wasn't even close to a B. It was much bigger than a B-1. We're not alone in the universe. Bro, I don't know. Personally, this is like one of the most convincing UFO stories of all time. What you're looking at here is footage of a UFO filmed by the USS Omaha back in July of 2019. According to the New York Post, it was filmed by a cell phone inside of the control center of the ship, which is illegal. And if you're thinking this is some kind of hoax, the Pentagon actually confirmed the legitimacy of the video. And the thing is, this wasn't the only incident. Around 2019, 2020, there were multiple UFO sightings in San Diego. So a few years before, this guy Rick Ybarra captured a video of a flying sphere in his backyard in San Diego. And a lot of people think that this is the very same craft from the previous video we just watched. I could see the, the object floating almost as if it was in water. It would it would rise up and down just slightly and sway back and forth a little bit. You can see the whole Ricky Barra video in its entirety on the channel. It's redacted along with an interview from Rick himself. There's this guy, Frank, who runs the YouTube channel exploring abandoned mines in unusual places. I'll give you one hint at what kind of content this guy makes. In 2013, Frank posted a video titled The Horton Mine encountering a ghost in a haunted abandoned mine. The Horton Mine is located in the middle of nowhere, Nevada, just south of nothing. There's not too much information about it online, but what I do know is that its main resource was mercury and it was abandoned sometime in the 80s. So by the time our boy went exploring, it had been about 30 years since it was active, which already gave it a very creepy vibe. Then things started to take a supernatural twist when this happened. I don't know why that one chain is swinging back there. And obviously something is making the chains uh, swing. So time to get the hell out of here. You might be thinking, oh, it's just the wind. What, what wind, bro? He's deep inside a freaking mine. What wind? Also, if it was the wind, wouldn't all the chains be swinging in a similar manner, you idiot? A year later, this man decided to go back and revisit the mine because, you know, every horror movie needs a sequel. This time he went in a lot deeper than he did in the first video and he saw some 
pretty weird things like this unexplained mist and I mean it probably can be explained but not by me if that wasn't creepy enough for you at some point in the video you can hear voices okay here's a final parting shot of the end of the Horton tunnel and uh there's the uh, ore pass with all the cascading water and um, what the fuck is that? I don't know what that was, but uh, there was a sudden blast of cold air and uh i'm getting out of here now this clip here for some unknown unexplainable reason is not in the video that's currently on youtube frank cut it out of the videos years after it was posted i don't know why maybe he's a psychopath because it took me so long to find this clip i watched the video like 40 times i thought i was going insane <laughs> There were multiple UFO videos allegedly leaked by a member of the Department of Homeland Security to this Instagram account. Now in his bio, he says, I only post legit information, so we know this has to be the real deal. In the first video, you can see the A-10 jet and then, whoa, what the mother shit is that thing? In another video that was taken somewhere in the Arizona desert, there's an unknown object moving and it didn't register a heat signature. That's a weird thing. You can see those black lines are cactuses, cacti, cacti? And then you can see the little white mother sucker moving around at breakneck speeds. What is it? An alien? A ghoul? I don't know. On October 15, 2010, CBS News obtained this video of what looks like three floating orbs above New York City. Bro, imagine this. You just put on a fresh pair of Tim's and you're on your way to the local bodega for a delicious bag and egg and cheese. And you look up in the sky and you spot this extraterrestrial phenomenon. I don't know, man. Maybe the ET was trying to get a chopped cheese, but th this is like an eight out of 10 believability for me, bro. Like what the actual mother shit is that thing? Okay, so clearly you can see that something is aggressively knocking on the door, but it's like a it's like a glass door, so we also see that there's no one on the other side. What's up with that? I love how this dude is completely unfazed by this as if it's only the eighth weirdest thing that's happened to him this week. Actually, the fact that he's so unbothered makes it more believable. <laughs> Workers at a hospital in Thailand were shitting their britches after seeing something disturbing on CCTV footage. If you're still not convinced, a news crew visited the hospital to confirm the mysterious case of the self-rolling wheelchair, and it was still rolling on its own. All right, they checked. They checked everywhere, and there was no strings or magnets or anything attached to it. On May 17th, 2009, Yalçın Yalman was stargazing in his neighborhood right outside of Istanbul, Turkey, when just after 3 a.m., he saw something that blew his tits right off. This is one of the most famous UFO sightings in history. Yalchin claims that this right here is actually a cockpit. If you look closely, 
you can see the ETs piloting the ship. Now, a lot of people have speculated that this is CGI, but I have to push back on this because have you ever seen Turkish CGI? <laughs> I've come to discover that Turkey actually has a long history of UFO sightings. These people love their UFOs. It's one of their favorite things, right on their donor and uh, genocide denial. It was revealed at a UFO conference in Istanbul that Yalçın's recording was not the only one of the craft and sightings had been reported in the same area for over two years. Never before seen footage of UFO sightings this year are being shown at a conference in Pontefract. Well, these pictures were shot over the summer by a lifeguard in Turkey. Extraterrestrial experts from across the world and people who claim to have been abducted by aliens will all be at the conference. It's being presented by uh, Haktan Arkdugan, if I've got your name right there. Haktan, uh, tell me about this footage and why you think it's important. Well, this extraordinary inc incident took place in Kumburgas, uh, in Istanbul. It's a compound in Kumburgas, and it was witnessed by many people who live in the compound, and it was filmed by the security guard for almost three hours within the period of time, like two, uh, two and a half to three months. There's a whole YouTube channel dedicated to these alien sightings, and it's pretty interesting. The following clip was filmed while my mom and I were on vacation. We decided to leave our cats at home while we were gone. When we arrived, we noticed a strange change in their behavior, so we decided to review the footage. All right, I mean, there's just so far nothing too alarming. I mean, cats are afraid of everything. It's where the term scaredy cat comes from. Okay, I mean, you could easily have somebody standing outside of the view of the camera shaking the table. That doesn't mean anything. Okay, that one I can't really explain. She goes on to say, the camera panned to the wall and stayed there until we returned. Something was obviously off, so I downloaded the clip and made it brighter. That's kind of, that's kind of dicey. And the, the face detection detected a face, but there's no face. How did the face detection detect a face and there's no face? Man, ghosts. Jeremy Corbell is an artist and ufologist who has appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast with Bob Lazar. He's that guy who claimed to have worked on a secret US government project where he studied alien technology. So this Jeremy guy has a YouTube channel where he posts videos of UFOs, and this is one of them. So this here was recorded by a member of the US Navy, and I don't even know what to say, man. It looks weird. So this video was apparently recorded in an abandoned hospital that now functions as an office space. It was taken at night when nobody was supposed to be there. Here's my theory. One of the employees is in the middle of a divorce and got kicked out by his wife and he's been secretly living in the office. <sighs> been there, man. It is not a fun time, let me tell you. That was genuinely terrifying and I have nothing else to say about it. I'm not gonna lie, I was really hoping to find some footage that would convince me that ghosts are real. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, there was a few that made me go, hmm. But nothing more than that. There was no 10 out of 10 convincing videos. I'm still a skeptic. That being said, I will continue to be terrified of ghosts at 2am. Alright, we got ourselves another military captured UFO video, this time in Puerto Rico. And I gotta say, I'm impressed at the dude recording, like he's really keeping up with that mother sucker.